Gal show is ghetto. Allegedly. Today we have with us Mr. Gino McLaughlin. What's going on? What's happening? Doing? I'm doing good. Chilling. Yeah. Appreciate y'all having me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Happy to have you. Second okay. time technically right here in this space. Uh, first time was just a little promo, but <laughs> glad y'all actually got me on the show this time. Well, can you tell us a little about yourself growing up and where you're from? So yeah, I'm gonna give y'all my government name. You know, Walter Gino uh, McLaughlin. Uh, well, I knew that. I, I, did you? I, I <laughs> nah, nah. I mean, but everybody called me Gino. Um, so I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I lived there, born, kind of raised there. But the way it was set up, like my my you saying it wrong, burn there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so so my mom's side is from New Orleans, my dad's side from Memphis, and so you know, mom and dad got together. They met in, in uh, at Xavier down in New Orleans, and so uh, we ended up in Memphis. Born, raised there, went to school there, but I spent a lot of time in New Orleans too, growing up. And so, uh, fast forward, long story short, uh, I was supposed to move down here with my mom. Parents get divorced, coming down with moms or whatever. Thought we were gonna be in New Orleans because that's what the whole family is, yeah. church, all of that. Everything. You know what I'm saying? In New Orleans, and ended up in this little small town at the time. What I thought was a little small town, Baton Rouge, ended up on Gardner Lane, and so that's been life since then, though. How you like growing up in Baton Rouge after you left? I mean, I was a t so I was still young at the time. So I, I, I didn't move here until I was a freshman in high school. Uh, it was different, though. You know what I'm saying? Memphis is definitely bigger. Um, and New Orleans was obviously got its own completely different flavor than Baton Rouge. And so at the time, I'm like, man, what? what? And then, you know, Gardier at the time, too, back then, if you, if you, you know, I'm in the 90s now, you know what I'm saying? Late 90s or whatever. Uh, Gardier at the time, it was like in the middle of nowhere, too. You know what I'm saying? Like it was the end of Blue Bonnet. The and island. it was Gardier. You know what I'm saying? And so we just kind of stuck out there by ourselves. And so I really didn't understand, you know, kind of what Baton Rouge was like until I started to really kind of get out, Maneuver. expand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Baton Rouge, too, you know, was, was on the come up, too. So it was really right. growing. Obviously, fast forward a little bit, uh, uh, Hurricane Katrina hits, and it really, really grows beyond that, you know. And so uh, it's been interesting to kind of, you know, come from that area. How ironic, though. Like, y'all really made y'all way before Katrina. Nah, yeah, I know, and right? Yeah, coming from them, too. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, all our family, uh, when, when Katrina hit, all of our family came up to us, you know what I'm saying? So we had probably, I mean, any given time, we had about 30 people in the house, you know what I'm saying? Three bedroom, the house, uh, everybody sleeping on floors. Everyone. I mean, it was uh, air mattresses. If you could get a chair, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just it just was what it was. Tough times, but in a way it was good, you know what I'm saying? That God allowed us to provide that space for everybody. Like I said, early make you appreciate the things nah, you have. Yeah, like yeah, no, nah, facts. More. Facts, yeah. Yeah. So let's get into Yeah, let's get into it, man. Yeah, we're gonna relax. I am I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you today. Can you tell me about <laughs> you serving I mean the starting the black restaurant week? Oh man, we're gonna go, go straight there. Black Restaurant Week. So yeah, so Black Restaurant Week really started uh, 2000. I mean, it's, a, it's what it really is. We were, you know, in the middle of having conversations, trying to encourage Black people about buying Black, right? And so you know how it is. You know, everything that we do and say can be controversial. You know, what I'm saying buy Black, that's racist, or whatever. You know, but at the same time, we wanted it to penetrate. Um, you know, we're speaking strictly to black people, right? We're, yes. we're talking to black people about why it's important for us to support each other, right? Um, but of course, you know, white people sometimes come all in. All lives matter, but we gotta have. Thank us. you, thank we you. Gotta we we gotta love ourselves first, right? And yes. it's a lot of stuff that we can do on our own to kind of help ourselves out, get get us out of the situations that we well, in, we gotta right? Help each other. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, what we were what we were really talking about was how can we push people toward buying black, right? And so. I come across this this kind of cool concept back in Memphis. Uh, a lady had started a, a black restaurant week there, right? And I'm looking at it, I'm like, hey, that's kind of cool. And I knew that we had a, 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 a restaurant week here, but then as you're looking at the list, ain't none of the restaurants black, right? And I'm like, hey, well, why is that, right? And, you know, not don't, ain't throwing no shade at them, you know, when I looked at it and even, you know, kind of saw, you know, kind of their concept, it just, it didn't really fit the black restaurants, right? Because a lot of your black restaurants, it's not that they're startups, right? But they, they lack sometimes the the ambiance, right? Like they're trying to set a mood a lot of times, right? Us, 
you know, we, we don't have the, the what's that? Ambiance. Ambiance. You know, just, just kind of the mood, right? The okay. vibe, you know, in, in our language, the tone, yeah. the vibe, you know what I'm saying? Um, ours is like mom, mom and pop, you know what I'm saying? When you start thinking about Miss Lily's, yeah, you start thinking, food yeah, yeah, like yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the soul food, the food kind of matches the backdrop too. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like that do drop in type, you know, as our parents would say the do drop in type, type, uh, type little, uh, uh, facade or whatever. Right. And so that wasn't really uh restaurant weeks demographic right but at the same time when i start thinking about the dollars right like mm -hmm. unless we promote and amplify and highlight the best that we have right we got some black restaurants that's been around 20 30 40 years right but they also lack the investment to improve these yeah, buildings and things of that nature absolutely right and then when you think about on the white side Man, I know like a food truck, for instance, right? I ain't going to call none out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, I knew some white food trucks like that literally were in business for five years, right? And you had white investors with big money come in and be like, man, I want to start a restaurant for you, right? And they fund that chef to go in and start this restaurant concept. But yet you got two, three, four, more than that, black restaurants that have been around 30 years. With nice rates and rates. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And if you've been around that long, that means... Not only do you have a built-in customer base, that means you're a successful business. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know what you're doing. Yes. You know, and so you would think that the investment will come in. You know, to to the people that have been around a proven uh, commodity or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But most times, not even most I times. Good work going and notice, right? Thank you, thank you. I mean, it's it's noticed in our communities, right? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like we 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 still go over to uh to Delbert or whatever. You know, Chicken Shack. You yes. know what I'm saying? We we've always gone there, right? But it's not that everybody has always known about some of these treasures. I mentioned Miss Lily's, man. That little you know, that little food stand has been around for a minute, yeah. but not everybody knows about it. Not everybody knows about Miss Emma, you know what I'm saying? Even though- And Dorothy's, a lot of and people Dorothy's. Know about Dorothy's. Shout out to Gardier. Yeah, Dorothy's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I remember when they started Dorothy's, not everybody knows about that. Yeah. And so that's really what it was about, is to try to, you know, put some light on some of those restaurants, uh, put some light on some of the chefs, some of the food trucks as well. Uh, and so what we do is we do a, uh, it's a, it's a week, it's a week long celebration, at least once a year. Uh, my daughter just asked me uh, early, like, when am I going to do Black Restaurant Week? Literally, as I was pulling up over here, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking on it. I'm thinking on it. Uh, so it actually might come this month because this month is uh, is actually Black August and also uh, National Black Business Month, too. So uh, I'm, I, I might push it out uh, in the next week or two for August or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's, it's a week-long celebration, though, like I said. Um, we just push everybody. Uh, to these, to all the different black restaurants. If you are a black restaurant, you go on the list, right? If we know about you, I'm putting you on the list. And that has really generated a lot of uh, excitement, a lot of conversation about, you know, all these black owned businesses. It really was kind of a grassroots effort. And so it's been real cool to kind of sit back and watch people gravitate, you know what I'm saying? And kind of, you know, get real excited about supporting black businesses, you know, when it really, it was just us trying to get people excited about buying black. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's, so that's a misconception. Because they think you're doing being racist. No, I mean, look, I, I don't care. I really don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, yeah. I, I'm talking to black people first. You know what I'm saying? And so, it's going to be some of them that feel the same way. Because yeah. all skin folk ain't skin folk. For real. Facts, facts. You know, so I, <laughs> a friend of mine, man, uh, uh, you know, during Black Restaurant Week uh, last year, I went on uh, Jay to Cody's show. Man, shout out to Jay to Cody. He's, he's a, a white ally, you know what I'm saying? But he's got guaranteed broadcasting over there. And so he was asking me, okay, you know, he, you know mind you, most of his <laughs> listeners are white, you know what I'm saying? And so he's asking me, you know, well, would you consider changing the name? But before he even got the question, I'm like, nah. I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we're not about to hide ourselves. We're not about to take off the word. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not about to shrink. I'm not about to hide the word black just to satisfy you when the reality is this word is intentional because... Because when nigger was getting thrown around, it wasn't a Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. And also, too, it's, it's like the story of, you know, all the other things. Like, it's the reason why we have HBCUs, right? Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't let us in these other institutions. There's a reason why we had to go and create black entertainment television. Why? Because you weren't playing our, you know, uh, our, our, our content on MTV and VH1, right? Mm -hmm. And so same thing with even though we had Restaurant Week. And listen, Restaurant Week is actually going on. Uh, I'm sorry, it just ended last week. Right? Right. I was out there. I ate at a couple of different restaurants. It's good. Right. Good food. Yeah. But during black restaurant week. Right. We're talking to black people and we are pushing black people primarily to go support our own. Now, what we found, though, is a lot of white people are checking for it. Right. <laughs> Even though some will say it's racist, you know, the, the kind of the. 
Uh, some of them understand, I know. But, but, you know, kind of the genius behind focusing on restaurants specifically, you know, yes. was even though we were having this conversation, what I knew is that white folks love black food too. You know what I'm yes. saying? They, they love black wait. food. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of them actually show up at the restaurants like, man, I ain't never heard of that. And now we got a man going around on Instagram. He going to try all the foods down here, Raul. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Putting light, light yeah. Light. yeah. And, and that kind of is what, you know, Restaurant Week is about, too. We go around, we highlight the, uh, the different restaurants throughout the year. We throw a number of different events uh, throughout the year as well. We do food truck pop-ups, food truck roundups. I mean, just all sort of things, right? Block parties. We, we sponsor a lot of different things. Uh, and even also trying to get the young people involved, too, right? Uh, you know, ultimately, we want to be able to provide uh, scholarships uh, to, you know, maybe, um, what is it, uh, Louisiana Culinary Institute, right? Uh, we also got BRCC that has a culinary uh, degree program as well. And so maybe to be able to provide some of those uh, degrees I'm to... I'm glad you said that because yeah. I had called the Louisiana Culinary Art School. I was supposed to go do like a tour around it. And, yeah. And she was like, once I start, I can meet the top shelf and... Absolutely. You know, graduate... Look, you know, but black black people, man, we, we are more than just soul food, you know what I'm saying? And that's not to diminish soul food. That's just to say that we cook all types of food, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you go get trained, you know, you can, you know, soul food can still be your thing, you know what I'm saying? We know how to throw down on them pots, right? But at the same time, you know, we can also go and cook French, French cuisine, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dabble in a little Mexican or Spanish cuisine, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, like our range is not just limited to black, you know, quote unquote soul food, you know what I'm saying? So we yeah. Got our own damn but see, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Black folks know how to throw a stank on anything, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and we, we you know, if you go back and look at just kind of the history of especially black Americans, right? Uh, you know, we brought our styles from, you know, whether it was the Caribbean and also Africa, right? As we got spread all over the all over the world. Um, but in America, you know, we had to take the you know the scraps of everything right and create magic out of it you know what i'm saying you might ask yourself man why black folks eat chitlins uh i don't anymore but you know what i'm saying like why do black folks <laughs> eat chitlins or some of these other things you know what i'm saying that, that we have had that we have that have become staples of our cuisine but also staples of our diet and you know uh you know we're gonna throw some ham hocks and some yeah. some 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 pig but don't know that on the reason <laughs> 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 and listen, you know, look, we, we probably got to cut back on some of that, right? Limited, you know what I'm saying? Because it definitely has affected our health, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, diabetes so and high blood pressure is a real thing, you know. But we got to eat it all the time, you know what I'm saying? We, um, we, could, we could really. Yeah, but we have always taken and, and uh, taken the least, right? The, the scraps and made magic out of it. And so Black Restaurant Week is also kind of a celebration of where we once were and where we are now. I love it. Yeah. That's, that's nice. Nah, I appreciate I it. I love appreciate black. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, black and proud, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I saw I read that you served as the chair of the L.A. Cats community. It's more, but I'm sure. Yeah, so, so La Cats, man. La Cats is the Louisiana Clinical and trans trans oh man Translational Science uh, Center. See, that's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but La Cats for short. Um, uh, it's over. It's housed over at least here in Baton Rouge. It's housed over at Pennington Biomedical Center, and I'm the uh, the chair of their uh, community advisory board. And so what we do is we sit and work with Pennington. Um, trying to penetrate the research market, especially for people that look like us, right? Yeah. Uh, we advise them on the best way to go do that, right? Yeah. A lot of times, you know, there are things that would benefit us, but they don't know how to talk to us. They don't know how to approach us. They don't speak our language. They don't come and from the, where we come and from. And we talk yeah. back, we ignorant. Or we that and, too, they also don't understand. So give you, throw out some, some facts and figures, right? 4.5% of... of 4.5% of all research participants are black people. That is a, I'm talking about a small fraction of black people participate. So there's a reason for that though, right? Mm. You know, your researchers, white folks in general, they don't understand, you know, what we bring to the table when we are uh, not, you know, participating in certain We're things. We're engaging in a lot of stuff. Why is that though, right? And so they never really ask themselves the question. They're just like, well, we just keep trying to talk to them. But you don't even understand the backdrop, right? And so things like, you know, Henrietta Lacks, right? Things like, you know, the Tuskegee uh, experiment, things like that have been passed down almost like our, you know, we, we might not have inherited wealth, you know what I'm saying, but we inherited these stories, right, yeah. uh, of, of, of all sorts of injustices, including research, including healthcare injustice, uh, you know, black maternal health, you know what I'm saying, like why, why, why are our babies the ones that still die early, you know what I'm yeah. saying, the, you know, our infant mortality rate is still the highest, you know, and so when you ask yourselves those questions, you start to realize, well, one, 
a lot of those things were intentional. You feel me? Like those things didn't happen. Like you know, you didn't just start experimenting on black people and then syphilis. And it was you, a reason. That was why. that was intentional. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like um, when, when they were sterilizing black women. I mean, shout out to black women, man. Like black women have had the least of everything, right? You know, when Malcolm says the black woman is the most disrespected, you know what I'm saying, the most hated. There's a reason he said that, you know what I'm saying? Like all everything that we know about modern gynecology, you know what I'm saying, came on the backs of black women, literally with no anesthesia, with no medicine, no anything. Yeah. They were going and just experimenting on black women. These are stories though that have been passed down, right? I mean, I remember them growing up, you know what I'm saying? So we might not have a whole bunch of written history, you know, because they stole and kind of tried to erase our history, right? But a lot of our history is oral. Right yeah, and so this oral history is something that is, you know, been passed down to us. And so that distrust, the same distrust that we got of the police, right? You know what I'm saying? Even though we ain't always been able to prove it, we knew that, you know, police brutality was a real thing. You know what I'm saying? Thank God, shout out to these cell phone cameras now, yeah. you know, that we can actually show it. Yeah, but, you know, the same way, you know, that we that we had this natural distrust of police and, and other entities and government and all these things, right? We had the same distrust of, of healthcare and research. And so what I do at Pennington is kind of help them think through, uh, well, one, hold them accountable, right? Mm -hmm. Hold the research industry accountable along with some of my colleagues and stuff, hold them accountable for things that, that, that they have done in the past. But then secondary, if we're gonna change health outcomes, which is what I really care about, right? If we're gonna change things for black people and change, you know, if we want to eradicate high blood pressure and diabetes and some of the things we that, gotta change some of our we got to change some of our habits too right and so i'm trying to tell show them how they can you know do uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for how, how they can uh do i guess critical and 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 and, and uh, culturally competent outreach to black communities how, how do you need to talk to people yeah. one employ some black people yeah. the, as you, you as a white person you probably ain't the one to need to go in my community and go talk to my you people can't relate to me. Uh, thank you not gonna listen to you. thank you but judy can though yeah, you know I what i'm saying can. absolutely and so i can <laughs> absolutely you know what i'm saying so it's, a, it's about empowering our people to be able to speak to our people right loaded with the facts and the data but also um, educating them on what the research needs to look like. What, what type of prog programs would black people probably sign up for? You know what I'm saying? So that's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of good work, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and no, no matter where you fell on, like even like the, the COVID question, right? Like if you wanted to do a, the vaccine or not, you know what I'm saying? There still needed to be a conversation that had to be had with our community, right? Mm -hmm. I remember Eugene and some others, you know, uh, they, they were, uh, Eugene Collins from N NAACP and get away, shout out to Eugene, man. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, when they first uh, brought out the vaccine, you know, uh, him, Cleve, and some others, you know, there was this conversation. Cleve Dunn, I'm sorry, I'm just name dropping out here. <laughs> Councilman Cleve Dunn, put some respect on his name. Um, but there were conversations about, well, okay, we knew that COVID affected black people, uh, pr not primarily, I'm sorry, uh, disproportionately, right? And so if it's primarily affecting us more than others, especially like in terms of the deaths, right? right. Um, then it means the outreach, right, and the solutions need to be geared toward us, right? You can't just be telling black people who, who might lack, you know, uh, transportation and, and all sorts of other go things, right? Vaccine. Go get a Well, you want me to go across town with the white folks where, why are we always putting things and making it convenient for them, but the things are affecting us, right? Yes. And so there was this push to make the resources available to us, right? Now, I'm not saying that everybody went out and got it, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to <laughs> have that, that conversation. No, go ahead. When they posted up under the tents. Right, right, right. So it was pop-up tents. But why not tents. have a van going around? Well, so. that's so. So no, nah, no. Nah, so so no. Nah, look, I, I think you know what you're saying is right, though, right? So eventually, that's what they started doing, right? And they they, they did these mobile units as well. First, it was the pop-up tents, right? But then they said, no, nah, we need to actually take a unit into the into the community. That way, we can be mobile. We can be we can be in Zion City one day, right? We could be at Borderlines one day. We could be at End Zone one day, and then we could be over at Dorothy's and Gardier, right? Going we could to the people. going to the people. We could be at you know, uh, at uh, Old South, we could be at uh, Leo S. Butler Center, be at uh, Charles Kelly Community Center, be in all these communities, and we can take the resources to them, and we can also educate people about how COVID actually affects them and how they can keep themselves. You yes, know what I'm saying? The reason they should get the vaccine. There like, you go. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Tell somebody to go get a shot. Right. Uh, and and they don't shot? understand it. They, they don't understand it. What's in it? And I already what care. What is the side effect? Of it? <laughs> all of that. All of that. You know what I'm saying? And so that's really a lot of the work that we're doing over there with with the Lacats uh, Community Advisory Board.
So what happened with you and Johnny Domino and Eugene for the school? Oh man, all right. So so all right. So I'm gonna start there and then I'll work backwards. All right. So yeah, you know, <laughs> shout out to Johnny, man. <laughs> shout out, man. My man's a clown, bro. Like he, he, he. But you know, we need that energy, though. You know what I'm saying? Like remind yeah. me of of me, Gene, people like you know Gary. Yeah, good for the song. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I'll 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 tell the story. You know, so that story starts. It starts. Um, I was trying to, mind, like, I was out here minding my business. You know what I'm saying? I was at my niece graduation. Uh, I, I wasn't even there on no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? I show up at Lehigh's graduation. Um, and if you know anything about Baton Rouge, you know what I'm saying? Jigga City. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, <laughs> they, the they kids, they've been embracing. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and <laughs> you know, we actually had just gone viral. You know what I'm saying? For like the last two weeks, you know, talking about, you know, kids uh, celebrating their, their uh, graduations. And so. But why not? <laughs> Facts, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's the biggest day of your life, right? Yes. And so, you know, the way that we think about it, you know, there was a time period where we all know about, you know, when you graduate, you throw the uh, your cap yes. and tassel, right? Like, I saw a school do it. So there was a time period, though, when that wasn't acceptable. You know what I'm saying? That was thought as thought of as disruptive, you know right. what I'm saying? And so, um, to me, you know, kids dancing, can it be disruptive? Yes, if you're doing it, you know, and they, if people are kind of getting, they, they're not getting their time to shine, too. But I think rather than try to shut it down, right? Like adults, man, a lot of times, man, they don't, they don't know, they don't know what they be doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're always trying to put a law or put a rule in place rather than actually going to talk to a young person and embracing the energy. You know what I'm saying? You actually get a lot better response if you actually go talk to them, sit down with them, rap with them a little bit, and get that rapport, and then find out what they own. But you always, we, we a lot of times try to create a rule or create a, a, a law, and then we want to punish you when the reality is yeah. that doesn't help. You know what I'm saying? Me taking your diploma or me putting this rule in place that don't, that's only going to further subjugate you. I'm sorry, all the big words. It's only going to further, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, a, a lot of times that just doesn't, that, that does more harm than any good, right? And so in this particular case, um, we at Lehigh's, uh, myself and Cleve, uh, uh, councilman, uh, we are at Lehigh's uh, graduation at the time, right? And so I'm with my niece, with my family, you know what I'm saying? Um, I come down the thing. I run into Cleve. Like man, and Cleve is kind of you know he well, amped he, now. He is a he is a he, he is a politician and he is you know uh, uh, he know how to move right. But he was on one. You know what I'm saying? This was the other side of Cleve this day. You know what I'm saying? This was the activist Cleve right here. You know, and he was I mean he was getting in a. And I'm like man, what's going on, bro? You know what I'm saying? So. And it, <laughs> You know, it's funny, you know, people try, you know, if, if you ask them about me, I'm the smooth one, right? I usually will be the one that's trying to uh, to find There's some sort of issue. common ground, yeah, you know, fine. first and foremost. But I look, I always, <laughs> I always reserve the right to be the other, but to be Gino from Gardier. I reserve the right to be that yeah. dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I'm trying to, okay, all right, what's going on? All right, well, let me see if I can kind of mediate, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking I can, I right, can pick up the phone, I'll holler at, you know, uh, Narcisse, you know what I'm saying, uh, the, the superintendent. Um, and then I see the the principal coming out, you know, because Cle Cleve's not having any success, and he, you know, he going in <laughs> over here um, with the district folk over there. And I'm like, all right, well, let me just go hide the principal then, right? And so, um, not to throw him up under the bus, but real, it is what it is, though, right? And so the principal kind of just brushed me aside, right, not knowing who I am, and I get it. I would oh, like the Elmo it is. Yeah, he like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, holler me another day, like Leave I'm not, and, like I'm, and so I'm. I introduced myself as a parent, you know, tried to introduce myself. He just, I'm walking behind him trying to, you know, I'm saying, well, are you going to at least stop and talk to me? Like, nah, you can holler me next week. I'm like, well, nah, I think, you know, what I thought was a better outcome uh, would be rather than withholding this one kid's diploma, right? Because I know, I, I, I see I didn't tell the actual story. What happened was they, the, the kids, obviously, like all the other uh, schools, they, a couple of them got up there, they jigged, not really on the stage. That's actually what made Liberty a little different. They didn't jig on the stage. What they did is they kind of jigged actually off the stage as they were walking back to their to their seats, right? And it really wasn't a distraction. That wasn't a distraction, you know what I'm saying, at all. And so, um, but they kind of, for whatever reason, they picked out one kid and withheld his and diploma. And they to be... No, nah, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't necessarily somebody important necessarily. I mean, we all important. But he wasn't necessarily somebody right. who had a name or nothing like that. Uh, it, just, it just seemed unfair. And so... Uh, I think Cleve knew his family, and you know, I think they're Nigerian, and so there's also a cultural uh, disconnect there too. And so I think they thought that he was being told that he wasn't going to graduate. You know what I'm saying? I think it's what you know uh, they thought. You know what I'm saying? And so um, it's the best day of your life, and it, we're talking about one kid, 
and they had at least 50, 60 kids, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like that, that that jig. So how do you isolate one kid and say you was the one, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not that they should have really punished any of them, right? Yeah. But how do you how did you find one out of 60, you know what I'm saying? And so my thing was to try to create some sort of, you know, mediation between yeah. the parties and say, listen, you know, okay, look, you, you, you held this diploma already. Why don't I put you and the parents together and kind of explain to the young man kind of what happened, whatever. That didn't happen, and so, you know, um, since that didn't happen and, and now you got the principal ignoring me and so I'm like, well, hold up now. Like, I did introduce to, in, introduce myself as a parent, right? And you're not even responding to me even on a parent level. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah, still have a saying. duty. Yeah, you still got a duty to... Like, yeah, I ain't told you who I am, which shouldn't even matter, right? Who I am, what I do, or what I might be capable of should not matter, right? I feel like you should... You should approach and handle every situation the same, and so I kind of felt like in that in that particular situation, he kind of he handled it wrong. You know what I'm saying? And I, I left and that. That's the point. You don't know who I am right now standing in front of you. He didn't have a clue. He didn't have a clue that day who he was dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Me and Cle we left there like, don't worry about but it. Even, we'll take care of it. I could be finna buy this. <laughs> no, nah, you it, it, look. It, it, I think like, that's I think it's a life lesson in general, right? I mean, you could be. I used to sell cars back in the day, right? And shout out to my dude Slugger, uh, my man Slugger. Like I, I'll never forget, he pulled up on the. Uh, Where he, he from? Guardia? No, Slugger was from man. I, Valley Park. I want to say from Sherwood, if I remember correctly. Uh, uh, it's, it's Webby cousin, actually. Uh, so he pulling up. I mean, Slugger pulls up. If you didn't know him, you know what I'm saying? He dressed. He, that day he was dressed down. I'm talking about down. It's raining outside, man. We laid back. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's a rainy day. Chilling. We chilling, and so man, Slugger pulls up on the on the parking lot, and he's just walking around. And, and I got two other people, two other salesmen sitting with me, like, nah, man, you can have it, you can have it. I'm like, man, I'm gonna get this money. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now they, what they did is they didn't think because of the way he was dressed and what he pulled up in. You know what I'm saying? He was real young. They didn't think he had no money. You know what I'm saying? I go out there, Slugger ready to drop seventy thousand cash. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. On the, you, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and so you know, made that deal happen. But the point of the story is to say that. You don't know who anybody is, right? Like, uh, like you should never let. Yeah, I got on Vans, and I'm, you know what I'm saying. Like, but you never know just because how I'm coming, who I'm connected to, what I, what power I might have. You know what I'm saying? All of us got a little bit of influence. It might be only on, over one person, but that means you got some influence. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, fast forward. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 hooked up with Eugene. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and Cleve and uh, sent that info over to Johnny. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> Man, when I tell you, man, we put the word out and BR did his thing after that. You know what I'm saying? They were all in this man's. I mean, look, as an activist and an organizer, I was proud to see, you know, a lot of young people as well as, you know, kind of middle aged people really get involved. Right. Because they felt like it was an injustice. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not the biggest injustice. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, why are we why are we punishing black kids for celebrating? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like this is our language. This issue so much. Go to school. Get yeah. Education. Yeah. And we're going we gonna to take the best day of their life and make it, you know what I'm saying, another day. Uh, you, not, not that you're criminalizing them, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like but you, you still, come on now, you know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, know what so, you know what I'm saying? Like, John, Johnny was wild with it, man. Like, he, you know, <laughs> man, like, it, it just, it, it took a life of its own, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the people really responded and gravitated towards it, you know what I'm saying? And, and it really... It, it really speaks to what we really do, right? People power, right? Like, you know, if you go all the way back to whether it's Malcolm, whether it's Martin, or even people like Stokely Carmichael, people like Fred, uh, uh, Fred Hampton, you know what I'm saying, Black Panthers, you know, it really is the power that we have is, in, it is it, yes, it's within ourselves, but me and you have our own power, right? Yes. But when me and you connect, we got even more power, you know yes. what I'm saying? And when we, then we connect with Johnny and connect with, with whomever else, now we're multiplying that power, you know what I'm saying? And so it was, a, it was, a, it was an example of what people power can do to move the needle, you know what I'm saying? Within 24 hours, now you got the whole district calling us like, man, let's sit down and talk about this. You know what I'm saying? Let's sit down and talk about this. And I think they thought that they could run even that conversation. Like, nah, we still going to be ourselves up in here because yeah. one, you got to speak to how you handling black parents, right? Like, like you're not going to be just handling black parents any type of way, right? Second of all, how we approach, you know, we have these conversations about, you know, make, adults are always making making decisions for young people, right? Well, did anybody ever ask the young people what they want their graduation day to look like? You yeah. feel me? Like stuff like yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so if you had, maybe they would have told you, you know, we would have loved, we would love to have a moment where we could just kind of freestyle. Yeah, something Dance like that. Off. Man, like I think it was not Madison, it was a mentorship that, that I think it was like a couple of days later. 
they actually had a really cool example of what listening to students and, and amplifying student voice could look like. Them kids actually, they didn't dance, none of them danced across the stage that year, right? But what they ended up doing was they choreographed a whole little dance at the end of graduation. Yeah, Madison Prep did a second line and it was so. And that's what I'm talking about. Broadmoor. They did a second Broadmoor. line. It was nice. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I think it was, I think it was just a, I think it was a powerful moment, right? Because uh, it, it brought in not just your average people that, that are kind of politically, you know what I'm saying, involved. It also brought in your street people, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what we need. I think Johnny, you know, kind of helped bring a lot of the element, you know what I'm saying? So so shout out to him, man. And, and shout out to everybody that that emailed and made a, a phone call, you know what I'm saying? Um, now to, to go back a little bit further in that story, though, right? It was funny that it was Lee or Liberty. I'm sorry. It was funny that it was Liberty that that happened to because you know a lot of like when I, I first met Eugene uh, at a it was a school board meeting to change the name of Lehigh back in 2016. That was the first time I met Eugene. Right, this was before Alton any of that and stuff had happened. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so you know, uh, it's funny how you know that was in 2016. Right, we were fighting to do that. Go back a little bit further. Mm -hmm. I told you I went to Lee, right? Yeah. Liberty is the old Lee High School, you know what I'm saying? And so I end up, you know, I, I I didn't choose that. I stayed in Guardian, so they bust us to 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 Lee, you know what I'm saying? And Lee was a, kind of this weird school. You had you had some hoods there, you know. You had Valley Park, you had Guardian, you had Mayfair, you had some of the South there, you know. Um, uh, but you got all these black kids there. It was pro, uh, predominantly black at the time. You got all these black kids there, but yet. It's all this Confederate, you know what I'm saying, imagery. It's, it's Robert E. Lee High School, first of all, right? A then white it's man. A white man. Not, not just a white man. He's a Confederate general, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's steeped in racism. It's steeped in the Confederacy. Steeped in everything that's against black bodies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so uh, it's also the rebels, right? Um, I told you I, I, I grew up in Memphis. My, and this is just, I guess, the story of the South. My, uh, my middle school, when I was there, the Colonial Colonels, my middle school at the time, the Colonels was actually a rebel. It was, it was a it was a Confederate uh, mascot, right? They changed that when I was in middle school. Then, fast forward a little bit, I was go, supposed to go to, down the street to, uh, to the high school my brother went to before I moved, uh -huh, and that was the Overton Rebels, another Confederate mascot. They changed that just before I got there, though, right? They changed that to the Wolverines. And then I moved down here, and I hear I, I'm, I, I'm, I land in Guardia, right? I was in Hermitage, though. I was on, I'm on not the other side, but the other other side. Uh, I'm in Hermitage. Every single street is a Confederate general. I was on General Beauregard at the time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, before yeah, I ended up on you. Jade and Leak and all that. But all of Hermitage are all Confederate generals. And then the high school I go to is a Confederate, you know what I'm saying? Like everything was just Confederacy. And so, you know, as, as a kid, I feel like you shouldn't have to, you know, you ain't gonna go to Germany and, you know what I'm saying, be Jewish and have to, you know, live through with, with yeah. Nazi symbols all yeah. in your face, you know what I'm saying? And so that was the equivalent to me, you know? Um, and so I, I did, I think it was my 11th grade year, I kind of spoke up about it in, a, in a, my American history class, um, uh, conversation about the Civil War and all of this. And so I kind of just went in. This is like three years into my high school. I, I've been going there, but it took about three years for me to kind of really speak up about something because I wasn't prepared. And I just this one, I'm tired. Like. Well, I, I ain't want no parts of it. I'm, I'm chasing, you know, I'm, I'm, I like every other kid. I'm worried about prom. I'm worried about, you know, this girl who I got a crush on. I'm worried about, man, am I, I going to pass this particular test? Stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And so... I shouldn't have had to be worried about, man, these people don't even respect my black skin. You, you feel me? And so uh, made a little stink about it. Uh, and so they, we actually had a, uh, I'm kind of moving fast through it. We did, we had a school-wide referendum on the name, on, on changing the name of the school. But that kind of shows you the power of speaking up. You know what yes. I'm saying? Now, we didn't get the name, I didn't get the name changed, but we, we literally had, took a school-wide vote on changing the name of the school. They came up with a whole new name, whole new mascot, all of that. And which what was missing the missing piece there was the adults right the adults they brought it that far but somebody you know should have taken it and taken it to the school board and kind of really mm. pushed it through and so what was missing was people like myself Gene, gary cleave at the time uh daniel uh Banguel at the time uh av mitchell at the time yeah and so what we did was in 20, 2016, like I said they was they were trying to sneak it through right they, not, not necessarily change the name they, trying, they had just built this huge school put 60 million dollars now they're gonna make it a, a magnet school now you know what i'm saying uh but you're gonna leave the name the same no one is racist like nah man so we just like we we showed I up don't feel welcome absolutely and what's crazy is you know it not only as a graduate of that school 
my son was about to go there too. You know what I'm saying? I was Please. like, nah, we're not about to do this. So we fought it. We lost. Uh, four years later, my daughter was about to go there, and I'm like, nah. And so we came back around, and we actually won. And that's how, you know, we, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tying all this story together now. When we were fighting, you know, uh, with the principal that year, you know, about the diploma, at least it had liberty on it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, but it took... That took 20 years, you know what I'm saying? When I think about when I was a junior in high school all the way to, right. and I hear my daughter is going to that but same school, you know what I'm saying? Say something. Say something. There you go. You don't there know you who go. listening. There you go. And so really, like I said, the, the, the moral of that story is if we can, if we can empower, not even empower, because everybody got power, right? But if we can uh, encourage people to harness their power at a younger age, you know what I'm saying? I think it's dope that you sitting here use young. We our power together. There you go. A full force. And the, and the younger you are, think about how much how much more comfortable you'll be by the time you might age. You know what I'm saying? It took me it took me years to just be comfortable to even I man. I, fa- I, look, I failed and dropped a uh, speech class twice when I was in college because I just wasn't comfortable speaking in front of people. You know, it might seem natural now, and I, you know, but that just was not who I was. But nobody had really tapped into the fire that was inside of me. It's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? At least you put yourself out there, though. You know what I'm saying? I think that takes courage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so can we talk about you directing the uh, organizing the outreach? Yeah, yeah. So so right now, I'm currently director of organizing the outreach for the Power Coalition for Equity and Justice. I should have worn one of these shirts. Um, but P- Power Coalition is a uh, nonprofit organization uh, that really um, is, 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 it serves to connect people to their voice and their vote, right? Uh, that's, that's really what we're there to do, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, one of the, the largest things or most important things that we do is around, uh, you know, GOTV or, or get out, getting out the vote, right? Trying to push people towards, uh, you know, uh, voter registration and, and, and voting in general, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, your vote count. Everybody, votes. everybody votes counts. Appreciate you. Uh, everybody votes count. Um, and so, but not everybody is, is 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 informed not everybody knows you know how do i even go register you know what i'm saying uh and, and look, we can even go to you know in car, former incarcerated people not everybody knows if they even have the right to vote you know what i'm saying and so some of the things that we do is like i said is, is voter outreach voter engagement voter education but then it's also uh around advocacy and policy work as well right we do a lot of work obviously with local and municipal governments but then also on the state level as well trying to change real laws right um you know a lot of my background is in street level activism and grassroots organizing, right? Going all the way back to, like I said, you know, that those Lehigh days and stuff like that, uh, really trying to mobilize people around issues, right? Whether it's Alton, whether it's, you know, uh, police cameras, whether it's, you know, I mean, all sort of things, right? Yeah. The, the issues are far and wide when you're black, unfortunately. And so those are the things that we try to do is, is, is tap into the things that we know uh, uh, are, are affecting black and brown people, right? Uh, or, the, or marginalized uh, 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 in impacted communities. And then we try to, we try to take that, what, what I call protest, right? Yes. Take the protest and then turn that into policy, right? You know, it's, it's cool to protest and it's cool to, you know, make some noise, right? But, but that's just- happening about, like- You gotta, you have to change policy, happening. you know what I'm saying? Like now, the real me wants to tear all this stuff down and start over, right? Because yeah. no, none of it, none of it was built for us, right? And so, uh, I, I think yeah, the best, absolutely, you know. <laughs> there you go. Um, but in the meantime, right, there still are everyday things that are impacting us, and so it's you know my job right now is this dance, you know. Uh, I, I say in, at the intersection of people and politics, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not for the politics, I'm for people, but at the same time, I know that you can't change anything unless. I'm also pushing the politicians to do the things that we need them to do. You know what I'm saying? And so it's that, it's that that nuanced dance. You know what I'm saying? Of, of being out here, uh, engaging people, trying to inform them, but also pull them into the process. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, listen, we got this this, this council meeting coming up. You know what I'm saying? This redistricting. Come help us. Come help us. Tell you all day, come on. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Put this on work. And without you we can't really get the wins, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we need people to show up, whether it's, in, you know, in, in session to kind of give their testimony, man. You, you, you'll never, 
you can never underestimate how powerful the human story is, right? Like, like you could probably sit back and talk to me for days and tell me what you've been through, right? And that's gonna change my perception on who Judy is. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you told me your name is Worm. Well, well, how'd you get that name? You know what I'm saying? Like, like that is like context and your story actually changes hearts. It changes perceptions. You know what I'm saying? What you did to get that name? You know what I'm saying? What would I do to get Gino? Nah, I was born no. with that. <laughs> but nah, nah. But yeah, some, I'm sure you. I'm sure people have asked you, man, what you did to get that name? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, where that name came from? Right. You know. Um, because backstory and context. Cause it could be a lot that you did to get that name, and you, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. It, it just helps to humanize people. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, with all that being said, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Power Coalition. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? We connect people to their voice and their vote. Uh, we're pushing people, you know, and mobilizing people towards the issues that that, that impact them the most, and trying to also. Uh, 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 empower them to show up and speak out, you know what I'm saying? Because those are the things. And, and stay a part of the fight, you know. You don't have to be Gino, right? That's another thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I respect everybody's, everybody got a lane. Everybody got a role to play in this, you know what I'm saying? Um, and you so, the second person told me this, like, be, be you. Be you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. And so you ain't got to, you don't have to show up the way that I show up. You ain't got to be all, you know, uh, front line with it, right? But your role still matter. You still matter, and what you say still matters. It still matters, and you can still play a part in your own liberation and your own freedom. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, and you know, it ain't got to be your job, right? But you can. How simple is it to to write an email, right? It's simple to write an email, right? How simple is it maybe to pick up a phone call and call your elected official, right? And say, look, we, we're not happy with what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to need you to do this. Or next time the next time you come in my community, you ain't going to be welcome. You know what I'm saying? We're going to run you up out of here. Or you ain't going to get that vote off. next time. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. Like, like we... <laughs> Like accountability can look a lot of type of ways, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not promoting violence or nothing like but that. What I'm saying is hold them accountable. We can shout you down too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we can make it real uncomfortable for you to come around, you know. And so, and again, I'm not encouraging you. You can use your voice in whatever way. I, I'm, I'm a little more smooth with it. Gary might be another way with it. Uh, Judy might be another way with it. Johnny might. You know, we all got our way of, of doing it, you know what I'm saying? And so just come the way that, that you can come, you know. And so. That's what we're doing at Power Coalition right now. You know what I'm saying? You might be the moving voice. How you Man, come? look, look, look. I, I I know I'm a voice, right? I am a voice, right? And, right. and at, at the end of the day, I'm really just standing on the shoulders of people that came before me. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing, like my I, I'm really the kind of the reincarnation of my dad, right? But what, when I look at some of the stuff that we've been able to achieve, a lot of that stuff wouldn't have been able to be done without the stuff that they was doing before us, yes. right? And then the stuff that he was out here doing. Go way back to Martin Luther King. Man, so, go back before that, man. Yeah, before this. Man, so black this folks is. ain't never stopped trying to be free. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like we ain't never just took it, it laying did. down. You know what I'm saying? I know Kanye might have told us different. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't never just took it laying down. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure there were individuals, but if you go back and read your history, like you will see that there have been freedom fighters from the beginning of time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And our history don't start there, man. Like we've been king out here you know what i'm saying yeah, they learned talking. they learned all that stuff from us you know what i'm saying like we talk the greeks they came to egypt they came to timbuktu i know i'm going deep here now you know what i'm saying we're supposed to be talking about power coalition i'm sorry so, <laughs> i'm learning stuff yeah man so they learning stuff too nah facts man so that that's really what we're doing at power coalition man it's it's a, it's a great organization uh we've also been able to regrant you know a lot of dollars to to up and coming organizations you know grassroots organizations that might lack the funding right um well, off, who you not work with what Resource. Oh man, like so we have a whole uh, not to get too deep, but we, we have a whole table of different partners, right? Step up Louisiana, uh there is uh housing Louisiana, housing NOLA. Uh I mean it's, it's a whole bunch of organizations, bike and vote, shout out Morgan Walker in, in New Orleans, uh just a a whole bunch of organizations, right, throughout the state, right? And mind you too, this is not just in Baton Rouge, this is statewide, uh right. statewide organization. And so there's a the whole bunch of organizations that have benefited from, that we've benefited from the partnership, but they've also benefited from the resources that we have, right? Um, and a lot of it might be around, you know, uh, voting, but it's not all voting. I mean, just recently, for instance, right, redistricting was a huge thing that was happening around the state and it's still going on, you know, but just recently we were actually won a federal case to actually uh, create a second black congressional district here in the state. So we've only had one black uh, congressman here in the state, right, uh, for years and years and years. And so uh, that currently is Troy, uh, Congressman uh, Troy Carter out of New Orleans. Well, what they do is, you know, <laughs> white folks, or white folks will, will, will create a district, but they looped in 
a lot of the black people together, right? So they put in your two biggest cities and all those black populations together, New Orleans and Baton Rouge, they lumped us together because they knew, oh, well, we ain't gonna give Baton Rouge its own because that means they're gonna have at least another one, right? But if we're 33% of the population in the state, right? You tell us the rules are, we go take the census, right? Every 10 years we take a census. Yeah. That's why, you know, we were doing census outreach I before saw, that, right? I saw you just doing it. Bet. And so, you know, we, we did census outreach and then from that, the data tells us that now black people uh, uh, are 33% of the population here in Louisiana, you know? Okay, well, that's one third, one third of six, meaning that we have six congressmen in the state of Louisiana, one third of six is what, two. two. So that means if black people represent a third of the state, then we should get a third of the of the representation yeah. in Congress, right? And so we've been making that argument in federal, uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in federal court. And so we actually won that lawsuit. It got appealed. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, the governor went back and he made them go and redraw another seat, another district. They refused to do it. Uh, I'm talking about our, our state, uh, our elected officials at the state legislature. They refused to do it. Um, and so the, a federal judge was going to draw it for them, but the Supreme Court stepped in. And so uh, it's on pause right now, but we, we've won so far, but it's kind of kind of what, what we're calling deferred, not, uh, uh, not denied, right? Uh, so who qualified like for the be with y'all organization like people? I'm saying like for victim feelings, all people like that. So so the organiz at least as it as it like today right now we actually are having a conversation about what membership might look like right now. Our members are our partner organizations, right? Um, but we pull in the general public, you right, to kind of show up. And there's, there's a ton of people that got Power Coalition shirts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you ever see them light blue shirts, that's Power Coalition. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's a ton of people got Power Coalition shirts. And we they are, you know, what, what I would consider members of our family, right? But we don't have, quote, unquote, official membership yet. But we're thinking through now what that might look like. Some of our other partner org orgs like Vote, uh, Voice of the Experience, they do have, um, quote, unquote, members. Um, and you know, kind of like with NAACP, right? You know how you pay a monthly uh, dues and stuff like that. We don't have that. We what we do is we just kind of make sure that we're engaging everybody and pulling everybody into the stuff that we do. You know, I didn't know that, but yeah. you told me that. Yeah, so oh yeah, yeah, people pay dues because look, it is it's, it's it's expensive to run these organizations. And the thought is too, if you put a little skin in the game, right? You likely like if, if I if I had to pay five dollars a month, I'm also likely to stay. You know, engage in that fight. Why? Because well, I at least want to get my money's worth, right? Or whatever the fee is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, right now we don't have you know a firm membership, but what we do is, you know, we do. You know, shout out to all our organizers. We have an organizer here in in, in Baton Rouge, Caitlin Joshua. We got one in uh, a new one in, in Shreveport, Billy Al uh, Alexander, um, uh, a really amazing one uh, who kind of handles all of our youth and, and college age uh, outreach. All he does is his scope is much bigger than that. Um, uh, Carlos Pollard, man. Uh, now I'm naming everybody. I'm gonna feel bad if I don't name everybody. Shout out to Janae, uh, uh and a I also our CEO Ashley Shelton. You know, it, this this organization was kind of her brainchild, uh, and you know, it's really cool because uh, before me, we really didn't have you know a lot of black men in that organization, right? And so it's a black woman led and run organization. You know, what I'm saying really, really dope. Um, uh, but we don't have members per se, right? We just kind of have okay. these partners, you know what I'm saying? But to me, you're a member of Power Coalition now, you know what I'm saying? I just got to keep you, I just got to kind of keep you lo uh, looped into what we got going on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how do we help with the organization? How do we get involved? So, I, you know, the short answer is show up, right? But how do you show up? How I do guess we show it, up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, so first, uh, let, let me drop some, some like check us out on Facebook uh, and all of the uh, social media, social media uh, platforms, right? Facebook, Instagram at Power Co. EJ, I think it is on on uh, on on Instagram. Uh, same thing on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me directly, uh, Gino underscore that's G E N O underscore nineteen eleven on uh, Instagram uh, and Walter Gino McLaughlin on Facebook. Uh, we're always doing outreach that way, but at the same time, we got a hundred person canvas uh, team right now, right out on the streets, uh, uh, you know, informing people about resources for 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 the summer of hope, right? Uh, and so, getting involved or, 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 or connecting with us, I, I would start with social media because that, that is easy, right? But we know everybody isn't on social media, right? Um, you can always reach out to me directly. I can also, you know, give you my uh, my email address. Uh, go to our website as well, you know, powercoalition.org. 
um, or you can email us at gmclaughlin at powercoalition.org. Mm -hmm. Like these are ways that you can contact us directly, right? Uh, and we can plug you into the things uh, that are that are happening. Uh, we do have a, uh, a a newsletter. That's another way that you can stay informed about yes. the different things because it's, you know, it's hard to, you know. I got stopped twice in the grocery store yesterday. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to, uh, I'm sorry, not what was that? When, when that was? Uh, that was a couple of days ago. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, my daughter out in the car and I got stopped by two people because when people see that, man, I want to be involved, man, how do I get it? You know, and it's hard when something comes up to think about everybody that's asked and you that. reach out to everybody. So. Yeah, individually. And so yeah. that's why I'm kind of giving you those different platforms and different uh, methods of, of kind of staying in touch with us, you know, but you will see us because we are always involved. You know what I'm saying? And I read that you was uh, you did a uh, interview with Parent Magazine. With who? Parent Magazine. Oh man, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got kids, man. Uh, three kids. Uh, uh, did that. Um, uh, Parents Magazine. It was really cool. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I was always really protective of, of the kids. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just because a lot of the stuff, especially early on when I really jumped off the porch, when I really jumped out here, you know, a lot of it was a, a little more. Um, you know, controversial, you know what I'm saying? It still is, you know what I'm saying? And people, look, I've been denied jobs, I've been denied contracts, I've had people, you know, like, Close. come oh, at, not, come, I mean, I, people, look, I, I, we, we had a protest back in Seagan Lane on uh, 2020 after George Floyd died, right? We was out there for weeks. And, you know, people know who I was out there got the, oh, in front of the Burger King and stuff. Well, you should have seen me out there then. Right? So, so that was us. And, and, and shout out to my, you know, I always talk about mentoring too. I lose track of thoughts. I mean, I, I talk so fast, man. You know, you be, be triggering all these I be, thoughts. I be jumping nah, but this is good though. <laughs> this is good, man. I, I love talking about this, man. Uh, but but on Segan, you know, shout out to uh, BR for the people, man. Those young people, they carried that fire, man. And so we were really just kind of out there with the experience from from 2016 and and and, and yeah. Alton Sterling. They were looking up to us, but they was the fire out there, and we was kind of yeah. like, oh man, y'all wilding, but. Here's how you do that because we had the influence and we had the resources. So we the ones picking up, calling the politicians, calling the, the sheriff, calling the uh, you know the BRPD. Like nah, y'all 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 not y'all not touching these kids. Yeah, they in the street, but you're not arresting them. This you know what I'm saying? Like let them have the street and negotiate. Not 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 negotiating, but but using that influence that had been built up over the years. You know what I'm saying? It actually showed up and it meant something at that at the in, in those moments where you know what I'm saying when you got people. And full arm or full ride gear, and they 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 can rush the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Like that's dangerous for those. You know, a lot of young people that was out there. Um, and so being able to kind of stop police in that moment, myself, Gary, shout out to Gary too, because he was out there. Uh, uh, Eugene showed up. And he he was out there as well, man. And you know, being able to kind of stand in between, you know, government and what we know, you know, uh, what police can do and we had seen in the past. You know, being able to use that influence because we were kind of those trusted leaders in that moment and stop them from doing harm to, to, to a lot of the protesters at the time. But we, you know, uh, what, was, what was I going with? You asked me something that triggered that thought. Uh, the parent magazine? No, not parent. Uh, I don't know, man, I'll just be talking fast, man. But, uh, <laughs> it, it, but the, the point, nah, me too. The point is though, man, like whether it's, you know, whether it's protesting in the street, man, whether it's advocating at City Hall, man, all of it's relevant, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, you could be holding signs, man. You could go, you could be a poll watcher as well, right? Right now, we're we're actually recruiting volunteers for people who want to be involved in, in, in the get out the vote season. You guys know that we have an election coming up November 8th. Uh, and so, uh, make sure that you guys are, you know, kind of checking out for that, you know what I'm saying? Early, ooh, man, I'm trying to throw out these dates. Uh, but uh, the early voting period is, uh, is, is two weeks before that. So, you know. Just make sure you guys are checking out for those days. But we're recruiting volunteers right now. We're also going to be hiring canvassers. We just hired 100 canvassers, street people on the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like people that look like look like me and you to go out into the community for, for the summer just to ask people what resources they need, you know what I'm saying? So we're always trying to, as best we can, take some of the grant dollars that we might get and put that back into the community you want me in to that work way. With y Absolutely. Oh, right. You hired, man. Absolutely. See, you heard it here first, man. Shout out to Getaways <laughs> TV. <laughs> So yeah, man. So you know, it's it's it. That, that, this is kind of what we do right here. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 connecting with people. It's pulling them into the things as best we can. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, trying to trying as best we can to keep them connected. You know what I'm saying? Without falling off. You have anything else you want to tell the people? Man, so like I said, man, make sure you guys get out and vote. Make sure you guys stay connected with Power Coalition. Uh, you can also follow, uh, like I said, myself. You can follow uh, Black Restaurant Week that we talked about at Eat Black BR on Instagram uh, and also Facebook. Um, but 
just make sure you guys get out to vote. Remember these dates, like I said, uh, the election coming up in, in November. We have uh, Senate uh, on the ballot. Uh, you have a lot of local uh, things as well. You know what I'm saying? We also have the Public Service Commission on the ballot all kind of throughout the state. I know this might be, well, now you guys are statewide and regional as well. So, no, this is a big platform. My bad. Uh, so, try, trying to speak to all the different things that are happening. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, so make sure you guys get informed, right? Get educated about what's on the ballot. Uh, and I can always come back and talk a little bit more as we get closer to election date. Uh, but make sure you guys save those dates, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, it's really, really important, you know. Uh, and, and, and as we, you know, walk up to that, you know, in September, there's, you know, uh, National Black uh, 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 Election Day. You know, there's just all these different things that are coming up that I think that are really important and that are ways that people can, can get excited about voting, right? I know voting ain't always the sexiest thing, but when you start to learn about how these votes impact you, right? The judges that we elect, you know, the, those those are the people that give out the sentences, right? When we start talking about criminal justice reform, right? When we start talking about, you know, the the we elect our sheriff, right? This is the person that, you know, is 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 it can, you know, lead those. Y'all always complaining. Go vote. Go vote, so, man. Go shout vote. Out. Shout out. Y'all know y'all want stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> Your district attorney too, man. We elect them. Obviously, we don't just, you know, she she, she said the stimulus checks. We don't just elect presidents. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, that, right. that is important. Right. That is very important. You know what I'm saying? But I think you know we all we have this saying that says all all politics is local, right? Because those things you will see the effects of those things before you see the effects of like those national things, right? And right. so you know, even though. Even though like Roe versus Wade and abortion, those are big things and those are important. You should get engaged on that. We can help y'all with that. You know what I'm saying? We we fighting on that end too. Right. Uh, voting is going to be the most important thing. And so watch that redistricting case. Uh, uh, October the eighth is a really important date to watch for. With that, we'll be in Washington D.C. to see what the Supreme Court, what they, how they rule on uh, uh, the Alabama case, which will impact Louisiana as well. And then, like I said, in uh, a month later, you got uh, you got election day. Well, it was a pleasure having you. Now, I appreciate I hope you inviting me. Again, and I will be signing up to work with y'all. You with us already. You, you you already part of the Power Coalition team. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and thank you guys also for tuning in to the Check On Your People show where we bring you the people that's for the people. Worm Judy. Don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget it. <laughs>